Hi everyone, I'm on location here in Sydney. It's the old government house grounds. It's a spectacular garden and we also do have the marvellous entrance into the grounds as well. Uh, the thing I like, it's that sandstone, so that holds the light beautifully. The dark painted metal wrought iron gates are marvellous as well because I can really play the dark up against the light of those shapes there as well. So let me get stuck into work and see how far I can get. I do like to start with the 2B pencil. It's just a little softer and a little more forgiving, but then I'll choose that I can go up to a 6B. Some artists like to use an, an 8B and I'm not against it, but sometimes it can change the graphite just a little too much for me. But once again, it's placement of shape, just getting some idea where shapes are and what's actually happening with these shapes, their relationships. Um, I used to draw a lot of these scenes, so they they are fun and, the, and the, I know that they are a, a good subject. And, and sometimes that is part of painting is, is thinking to yourself, okay, I'm going to put in a couple of hours, sometimes half a day's work. And you almost want to know that it's going to going to work or have a chance of working and thankfully this type of scene i had that knowledge from previous drawings that is what i keep telling this guy if you're one of the to be done tomorrow it's going to be done tomorrow okay so i'm starting to get some really good values down shapes down but it's starting to sort of look a little dodgy. And these are some of the marks that I really love to get, some of those really strong, confident marks. That's what really makes a good drawing, I believe, getting the darks in, because really it is just a light to dark study. Well, that last shower of rain was just a little too heavy to keep working. I was able to work through some of those earlier little showers, but when I went to smudge the paper, unfortunately it did smear the graphite and kind of stain the paper. But I always like to remember that I do need to work fast. Even though I was off to a slow start, I was coming home strong. Didn't quite get it finished, another 20 minutes and I would have really, I think, sort of got the drawing I was aiming for. But I got plenty of information down and ultimately that's the main thing. Uh, so I think I'm now set that later on, if I want to uh, do another drawing, bigger drawing, or even a little oil painting, I can do that in the studio. We're finally back from Sydney and I thought I'd have another look at this scene. Now that I've had a bit of time and distance away from the subject, I can see where I need to approach it and tackle it. Let's see how I go. Uh, it's a little bit like going back to my future. I did numerous uh, sort of fountain drawings, gates, um, the old sort of sandstone buildings. The sandstone really does hold the light well. Probably the area of concern with this one is that with all the grey of the road and kind of a cooler sky and the actually sandstone is on the cooler side of things so it's lots and lots of cool. So that's one of the areas that I'll be sort of looking at to start off with. So that's a good trick is to actually overheat the shadows, trying to get a little extra light. That normally always helps negate that as a concern. Because a lot of times I will kind of think most scenes are on the colder side. You don't get too many really hot scenes, say late afternoon sort of sunsets or that golden hour, uh, some really autumny colours or scenes can be quite warm but as a general rule I think a majority of scenes are on the colder side so I'll, I'll pretty well employ that idea pretty well with most scenes but this one is a little cooler than than the norm which when you're doing a drawing doesn't really concern me too much or concern us so that's why I'm getting a lot of colour into these shadows as well I do work wet in wet. It's probably one of the uh, most frequent questions. 
But I think the true secret and key is, is to not put the underpainting on too thick. So it's not the same thickness overall. I do temper because uh, the way that I look at it or, or plan it is, if you were to have a look at, say, the tree sort of straight through this middle area, the foliage, where I can see there's a lot of foliage, a lot of light, where the foliage will go, I'll aim to get a little thinner in that area. But where I see shadows, say in the trunk and where some of the sh uh, shadows may be, that's where I'll kind of go a little thicker. So that's kind of the, the method that I use. It's kind of served me well now for 36, going on 37 years. And I do feel as though foliage has a way that it grows, it, especially most sort of trees. Like there are certain weeping willows that do kind of fall in a more vertical fashion, but most trees, especially these ones, or most of the trees that I'm painting here, are almost a classic ice cream shape. If you think of the one, the original one that I was working on, you put a cone shape, like an ice cream cone down at the bottom, and that will, then you'll see that the foliage is, is like a big uh, lump of ice cream, with just not too symmetrical. And you'll see when I come down, I'll break that up. This is actually probably mostly King's Blue. That, that sky with a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of distortion. Just giving this little surface up here just a little more light. I feel this is where the little number three master's choice really does come into its own. And not every area do we want really rough or ragged. So this being, not, you'd never say asphalt or a bitumen road is, is soft, but to the eye, especially the further that it goes away, it is a fairly smooth surface compared to, say, long grass, which will be very texturized. And it is good to make sure I'm stepping back because I can keep that uh, light plan working where the shadows fall, where the, the light needs to go. Because there's sometimes nothing worse than staying up too close, too long, and we can sort of get things out of kilter. Now it's time to come in for the all important darks for the gates. This is most likely a French ultramarine blue and a little bit of light red ochre or terra rosa is very similar. Just favouring the ultra blue of course quite a bit so that we get a nice dark. And this is definitely the old carpenter's mom. Uh, rule of thoughts, measure twice, cut once, because we don't really want to be having to repaint this area. It's probably the one sort of wet in wet sort of jobs, and there's quite a few um, when we come to all different sorts of paintings that where the foliage, the sky, even the, the road, the, the light, we all can come back and uh, readjust, but when we're coming across with either a, yeah, sometimes a light we can readjust, but a dark over a light or over some mid-tones can be pretty tricky to, to adjust. With the benefit of the drawing under my belt, I then knew how to approach this scene. I did come across a few concerns as I was painting. I felt the light just wasn't quite really resonating. And when I got those lovely darks and that lovely sharp edge on the pillars, I felt the painting was complete. Hope you enjoyed it. All the best.